When you see a pagan, someone who is not saved without money, when he gets money, his sins will be equal to the amount of money he has gotten. Then the, the sins were bound. The pride was bound, it was a lot. The things about salvation was far away from me. They are made of the laws of God. That is how also I'm contrary to those who teach the grace. But the laws has been taken away. There is no way it has been taken away. Because we are the citizens of the they are the citizens of the kingdom of heaven. There is no any country without the constitution or the laws. There is no any family that is well without having the laws to control it. There is no any way that the grace can abandon, can leave the laws. That, but what the grace does after being aware of them and knowing who you are you no longer need the law because there are some people once you ask them to work uh, they don't do anything let me refer to pastors who are seated here all the pastors do not teach what you don't do pastor Pastors, don't ask your Christian to do what you don't do. If you ask the believers to pray, be the sample, be the first one to pray. Most of the pastors ask their believers, the members of the church to pray. But they, they don't, don't pray. pray. Where are you find so many problems? Wambezi or the intercessors. Intercessors. These are the people who are so difficult for the servant. Intercessors, guys. Do you know why they are so hard to be led? You don't find the pastors in the, in the midst of the intercessors. They don't even know them. They don't even know their use. For me, I went there. It, it teaches us to say no to ungodliness. That is how some false teachers that claim to be the gracious that teach about not to serve God are that you can do, you can commit sins that has been, it has been paid but you have no harm. It will harm you let me send the pastors who are here. If you want intercessor to come in the church and do the work of the service, go and put them into activity to work. And you intercessors who are seated here, just leave your disobedience. All of this is what God spoke about us. There is the blessing that we are expecting that is coming along with the grace of God. Those who have been gracious who have gotten the grace of God. The grace of God has inserted us into the family of God. I am waiting to go to our home. Those who say, let me pray for the heaven, God, oh, give me heaven. Just other things, leave them, just give me heaven. Heaven has come into the package of salvation. What? Good evening, all of you. Uh, I thank God so much. I also thank the leadership of UPCM to give me this opportunity so that I may share the word of God. I know some of you, it is just our first time to meet. Uh, by my name, I'm Antoine Rutaisire. Which you got? From Kigali. Uh, I thank God for this great evening. 
And also these three days that we are partnering in the word of God. I promised you those who have been together in these two days. The first day we learned about working for the Lord. The main purpose of this conference is that we have been reading this scripture. I want me to repeat once again. How can it be for a man to claim that he has faith without deeds? How can it be for you to claim that you have faith without deeds? For the first day, we looked at the teaching which says you can't work without being born. Why? The reason why many people have no zeal to serve the Lord It is because they have never been born in the family of the Lord They grow up just in the church They have been baptized in the church But they have never become the children of God A child who obey the parents they must not emphasize him just to work in a family. A, cha a child who is normal in their family, in their household, must do the work by his own willing. Unless you are in the bad children, in Rwanda, they say that children are three. That three types of children. A child who can just give order himself. There is a child who can be instructed. There is also sorry. Oh, throw him somewhere. Throw him there. Irresponsible. Irresponsible. Uh, you might be one of those three children. But when you are a born child, the second day we looked at the teachings which says you can't work without getting a growth. If you don't get a maturity, you can work but you can work a childish activities or a childish work. Then Paul says, while I was young, I was a baby. I speak like a baby. I acted like a baby. But when I grow up, I worked like the grown-up people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When, when you see, you will find a person who does not serve the Lord. You have to ask those two questions. Does this person been born? Or maybe he has been born but he did not get any growth. But the first one, the first one is not good. But even the second one, it is also not good. It is something which is very hard. When you give birth to a kid, then you feel happy. But when you go and find out, you found the child is growing up, then after it's just limiting from here. You found it's no longer growing. You can start feeling sad. Because this child of yours he has, he is an ungrown person. I think in the church of God we have the ungrown people. People who are not grown up but there's others can grow up can just get a height but, but yet inside his brain is no longer functioning. I can continue acting like the babies. They, they can even dress for me a pampas. 
The some of the members of the church who are having the pampas. When pampers. you come closer to a kid who is having a pampas, all of us we had babies. Uh, you will feel a bad smell. There are some also Christian. You find them having pampas. Then this person appears to be grown up person. Even for not doing sins, it doesn't matter. It doesn't care. And sometimes he can get explanation about them. And he continued to commit sins. He did not grow up the way it was supposed to be. We have to think about it. Those are the, the teachings of yesterday and yesterday but one. Today we shall learn the word which says the grace of God has been found. Today we shall learn the word which says the grace of God has been found. The teachings about the grace of God. Those whom we were not together. Maybe they will be happy because he's going just to speak about the grace of God. Then others may say all to us. Even this pastor that I've been invited is going to preach about the grace. We will never stop speaking about the grace of God. Because by the grace of the Lord we have received salvation. I want us today uh, looking at the person who wrote so much about the grace of God. But he acted a lot than any other person. So that we can get an explanation of the grace instead of spoiling the work of God it can just tear up the work of God. I want everyone who is here I used to make an argument with the people who teach the grace. Mostly on YouTube channels. Uh, them they teach the teaching which is contrary to the word of God. This word of God is enough itself. But I don't know even the person who brought such kind of cult. Saying because of the grace of the Lord that we have received, we no longer need the pastors. We too we can reach there. Then I ask myself, the person who can reach there himself, does he read the Bible? So that he may know that God himself put apostles. Then he appointed even the prophet. He appointed evangelist of the grace. He appointed the, the pastors. And he appointed the pastors. For the church of God it should not be in disorder. The, our freedom does not allow us to bring disorder in the church. I've been, I've been born by the grace of God. I've been saved by the grace of God. But turns around, it can rule me. There's a way Paul wrote. We used to be the slaves of sin. And we give our parts of the body for the sins. But now, because of the grace of the Lord, we give our bodies for the work of righteousness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The power I use to serve the devil, I use it to serve God. I understand it. I can get it. Uh, a long time ago, before I was saved, I used to be a religious leader. Not a leader. A religious, I mean, you know, not only a religious person. I was a religious person. I loved my religion. But I hate salvation. I used to tell people the things of salvation that I used to speak. It is wrong. It is a deceit. 
Nobody can be saved. We all commit sins. There is a, a place where I used to go. Then the parents of that place was a Pentecost person. She was a woman old model. Are they old model? Nothing else would speak when you were making conversation apart from Jesus. And I was a pagan. The things about Jesus because I was not concerned. And I loved to speak. Uh, the way you can see me speaking, I used to be against the things of the Lord. I would even convince you to quit that way. There is a, a girl that we used to be friends in that family. Uh, we were in the same university. We were friends. I went to visit her. I found the people from DRC, from Kabera. There were so many. I sat among them. I started making an argument with them. The argument which was very warm. Then a person looked at me. He said, you young man. Even your speeches, the way you, can, you are talking. The Holy Spirit is showing me that you will be a servant of God. Then I used to tell that woman, Don't you see this man, young man? Don't mind about what he is speaking. The reason why God brought him here is for you just to pray for him so that he can be saved and serve God. It was in 78. Then uh, that woman prayed for me. Then I take it for granted. Uh -uh, nothing happened. Yeah, nothing happened. Then in 99, in 79. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. Uh -huh. That's how I call it. In 80s. Then uh, nothing happened. In 81. Uh, she was still praying. Nothing was happening. In 82. I finished my university. They gave me a work of teaching in the university. When you see a pagan, somebody who is not saved without money, when he gets money, his sins will be equal to the amount of money he has gotten. Then the, the sins were bound. The pride was bound, it was a lot. The things about salvation was far away from me. But that woman was praying for me. In 83, they chased me from the university. They did not chase me anyhow because of my sins. It was just because of the bad, the wrong politics that were there. They sent me to go and teach in secondary school. I was like the lost son. I made in mind reading the Bible. I was, I get saved. I started serving God. When we preach about the grace that gives us the zeal, what that was continued pushing me, giving us zeal, and a God. How can it be somebody who was against your things? A blasphemer who can take me from there, from sins, and give me your work. When I was about to be saved, I love the person called Paul. Paul. Paul is the one whom we are going to learn today. If you want to understand a lot about grace, you go and find out Paul. Because he knew what grace did in his life. Go and read all the pistols of Paul. Paul is different from Peter. Peter is Peter denied Jesus uh, three times. But go and read about Paul. 
Peter. Peter. Uzaso minza ndiko za Peter. Go and read the epistles of Peter. Na hanu na hamwe avuga ko yihakanyeshe gusho. No way he claimed that he has denied Jesus Christ. Ariko sominza ndiko za Paul. But go and found the epistles of Paul. He said for me I am wandering. Ni mani mamagara. God by calling me. Na tote jitoriru. I persecuted the church. I even killed the believers. But God despised them. He called me. He gave me his word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Paul is an amazed person because he's the one who gives the explanation about the grace. He related them with the work and him with the work too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because there are some people once you ask them to work they don't do anything. Let me refer to pastors who are seated here. Pastor. All the pastors do not teach what you don't do. Pastor. Pastors don't ask your Christian to do what you don't do. If you ask the believers to pray be the sample, be the first one to pray. Most of the pastors ask their believers, the members of the church to pray. But they, they don't pray. The church that I was leading, I have the behavior or the habit of praying seven, seven days when the, the, the year is starting from 1st January to the 7th January. I pray on behalf of the job, the work I do. I pray for the whole year. I, sorry? I take my book. From my notebook, I write it down whatever God is telling me. Because God is the one who taught me. So that you can come and ask me what you have to do. After telling you, Go and ask me the money to finance you. That is why I was so happy just to pray. Now, when I get to that parish, I slept, I passed my night in the, in the temple. Just on the altar. I took uh, something to cover myself. Then during night I used to lie on the carpet. One of the past the servant or a leader whom we served together. He was living just nearby the church. He's the one who gives me the testimony. Then he used to come and stand just closer to the window. Uh, then he wondered. Can it be possible the senior pastor to, to just pass the night in the, in the temple? The first night. Then he was just watching over me. Then he found I'm there. The second night. He found me in the church. At the third night. I was there. The fourth night. I was there. The fifth one. The sixth one. To the seventh one I finished. When we went to the council, then he said, let me tell you my brethren, this man will accuse us to God. The person who is the senior leader, then he can pass seven days sleeping in the church the whole night. If we don't pray, what can we give the excuse? Do not tell your believers, the members of the church, to pray if you don't pray. Where you find so many problems? All the intercessors. Intercessors. These are the people who are so difficult for the servant. Intercessors, guys. Do you know why they are so hard to be led? You don't find the pastors in the, in the midst of the intercessors. They don't even know them. They don't even know their use. For me, I went there. I called upon the intercessors, all the intercessors. I asked them, where do you go to do your intercession? They said in our families. Then I asked them, you will, are you explaining me that you pray at home? And the demon stays in the church. 
So, muheru yu musi. From now on, let your prayer be hosted in the church. But, eh. They say, oh, what, what kind of pastor is this? And they are the one who told me such kind of thing. Pastor, they ask me, pastor, what are you, is this what you are telling us true? Then yesterday, I mean last week when they were, the last word they were telling me, they said, they came tonight and say, Pastor is the one who will lead the prayer. Pastor, they say, the senior pastor is the one to lead the prayer. Pastor, How can, I, then he said, is Pastor a prayerful person? But if you don't, if you ask people to do those things, Try to find out, to find your time to go with them, to be with them. Let me send the pastors who are here. If you want intercessor to come in the church and do the work of the service, go and put them into activity to work. And you intercessors who are seated here, just leave your disobedience. All the ministries must act under the leadership of the church. We must do the work of God strongly but orderly. Some other people are hard to be led. That the youth. But them too they should do the work of service on, in order. That is the thing that you should understand. Paul explains well about the, the preachings of the grace of God. And whatever Paul was teaching, he was acting. Reason why he gave the testimony. He said, I, Paul, whom you can see. I used to be a sinner. I used to be a religious person. I hated the things of Jesus. I persecuted the members of the church. The Christians. By the grace of God, God called me. After calling me, the grace of God pushed me. By knowing what God did for you, it gives you the power and the strength. Hallelujah. Listen to how Paul is writing. In the book of Titus. I will start from Titus so that I can continue. Five things we can learn from the grace. Chapter 2, verse 11. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passion. And to live self-controlled, upright, godly lives in the present age. While we wait for the blessed hope. The glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. Oh, he is, who is our great God and Savior Jesus Christ? Who gave himself for us to redeem us from all the wickedness. And to purify for himself a people that are his very own and eager to do what is good. These then are the things you should teach and encourage. Rebuke with all authority. Do not let anyone despise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The grace of God. Paul said by the grace of God that brings salvation to people has been found. Here is where all of us we should start from. The, the grace of God that brings salvation to all men has been found. The person who did not understand this first part can never serve God. 
You must first of all receive salvation. You have to know that you have salvation. You have to know that your name is written in the book of life. You have to know that you, Jesus Christ is the Lord and Savior of your soul. You have the hope of the life of eternal life. That is why we can be able to serve God. The grace of God that brings salvation to all men. The second word that is what it teaches us. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness. That is the second word that is what it teaches us. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness. That is how some false teachers that claim to be the gracious that teach about not to serve God are that you can do, you can commit sins that has been, it has been paid but you have no harm it will harm you. The grace of God brings us the self-control it teaches us to live or to say no to ungodliness. Say no. To say no. When the devil brings the ungodliness to you or disobedience, you say no. Then you respond to the devil and say, by the grace of God, I say no. I am saying no, oh yeah. When the devil brings fornication, I say no. You say no. When he brings corruption, I Ruspa, say no. You say no. When he brings maybe I say no. A argument, you say no. Because the Bible has said the grace of God. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness. And also the worldly passion. The worldly passion. Or the last, the last of the eyes. The, the passion of the things of the world. When the devil shows you the last of the things of the world. You say excuse me. By the grace of God. These are the worldly passion. I don't commit them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then I believe any Christian who will understand this. He will, be, it, he will feel how the sweetness of the grace is. Uh, after, therefore, it teaches us uh, to be having the self-control. Being upright. So, I self-controlled myself from the things of the world. But even the path of Rach and the path of God, there is a highway. Jesus, Jesus Christ says that the way to heaven is very narrow. But we walk in it. The reason why they say it is narrow is it is because it has fences on the sides, both sides. These fences, those fences, these fences, they are made of the laws of God. That is how also I'm contrary to those who teach the grace. But the laws has been taken away. There is no way it has been taken away. Because we are the citizens of the they are the citizens of the kingdom of heaven. There is no any country without the constitution or the laws. There is no any family that is well without having the laws to control it. There is no any way that the grace can abandon, can leave the laws. That, but what the grace does, after being aware of them and knowing who you are, you no longer need the law. You are no longer being led by the law. I'm no longer being there's some CCTV cameras during, uh, along the road. Uh, we, we call them, it's here, it's CCTV. There's a robot camera that's called Sophia. We call them Sophia, those cameras. When you, you drive in a high speed, they can catch you. 
They can take a photograph a picture. Because the plate number, number plate, they have connected them with our IDs. Like now, the number plate of my car. Uh, R A A 300V. Once the camera, the robot camera catches it, I can see it automatically on, through my phone, on my phone. Then I say, You are passed through Rwamagana. Uh, Chigabiro. Uh, on high speed. And yet you are supposed to drive in the 60. Rush to go to police station so that you can pay uh, 25,000. You can never make an argument. But because of this, and I myself, I told myself, once I see the signboard of 60 speed, then I will slow down my speed. I slow down my speed on 55. Because I have to know that the, that camera can never catch me again. After knowing who you are, it's not, a, it's not a must somebody to remote you and to tell you how to walk. Because when I learned this, before they put those cameras along the road, I was caught by police. I was driving in a high speed. Then he stopped me. He took just a, a, a notebook. He came, he came just uh, nearby my window of my car. Then uh, I, uh, I just descend my, my mirrors, the glasses of my car. Then he came and said, oh, is, is, is it you, pastor? It's like anonymous. Then imagine it was anonymous. He said, Such kind of, you, pastor, you are spoiling the laws. You are not obeying But it's not the policeman was referring is ah, what saying. But the Holy Spirit explained them to me. Ah, then he said, did you know me? Do you know me? Do you remember me? Do you remember me? Then I looked at him I said, I should not add a sin to another sin. And he said, you did something good to me. Then I feel a hope rising from inside within me. Then I said, what did I do for you? Then he said, when I was in secondary school, he said, there's a time you gave me money just to pay the school fees. Now, for me, I said, I did it for many students I can't remember. But I too, I remembered him. Then, okay, I told him, if I did good to you, why can't you spare me? Then he asked me, what can I do? Just release me so that I can go. Then, then he said, Pastor, because it is you, if, if it wasn't you, I should punish you because of the, the speed you are driving in. But because it is you, I forgive you. But I want to tell you one thing. Once you live here, just slow down your speed because we still need you. Then I continue meditating about the world. It's here, this point where I'm getting. What has been punished the bad? Imagine a person is reminding me how to drive good in a good way, yet I know it. From that day, I decided to be even being an upright person no during on the road. Obeying the rules of the, 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 the government. This grace of God, it has made me what I am today. What I am today, I must now respect it. I walk as an upright person by self-controlling myself. Because I've been, God has been gracious to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
can you see a person to be a pastor? You found him in some wrong things, stuff doing. Does this person know what he is? Do you know that you are a servant of God? Do you know that you have to be a self-controlled person? Do you know that you should be a respectful person? Do you know you should be respectful to your master? But there are some other people who are still calling themselves the, the, master, the, the servant, the followers of God, yet they are no longer. And nowadays we have people. You find him standing on the altar. He's a bishop or a pastor. Then he said, This Bible is old, it must be rectified. We should amend it and relate it to the life we are living. Then in heaven they say that person is no longer our servant because he's amending what we have now established. There are some of the people God chased away but they remained in their position. But because God is, is rich in mercy he can bear with you. Because even the world is full of the sinners. You are not the only one who is the world. But if you are standing, you know that God has been gracious to you. Paul wrote to Timothy. He said, The grace of God Second book of Timothy. Chapter 2, verse 15. Even though you are able to do your best to present yourself to God as one approved. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved. A workman who does not need to be ashamed. And who correctly handles the word of the truth. 19 verse 19. Nevertheless, God's solid foundation stands firm. Sealed with this inscription, the Lord knows those who are His. And everyone who confesses the name of the Lord must turn away from the wickedness. Reason why Paul said the grace of God teaches us to say no to ungodliness and to have the self-control. And obey God in the recent on present time. The present time have its now thought. It, its work. Which is contrary to the mind of God. But we who have known the grace of God. We are taught to obey God in the recent days. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What makes us to obey God in the recent days, in the Bishop, present time? Bishop, uh, Bishop taught about blessings. What God promised us. What God spoke about us. We, all of us, the number we are. When God was creating you, there's what He spoke about you. Then he said, even if I'm creating this person, I am creating him well. Because the Bible says, we are his workmanship. Created in him for the good work. That has predestined a long time. So that we may walk in it in Christ. When we were born, God made a mark. He marked you. He said, This he made that seal. He said, This man, this girl, I'm creating him. 
then there is the good work I've created him for he must do at the life of good purpose is the life that you start by knowing what God says about you. And we as the parents, those who are still having the young children, but we too who have the old one, to remind them is good, is more important. The, the, the last born of mine is now finishing the university. But I'm having the responsibility over her. To, rem to remind her or him that God created him for, for the good work to work in them. When you take just a baby born, there's a time I used to hold the new baby born. When the parents have come to dedicate them, I just respected that time. In my hand, I'm holding the direction of God. And when I dedicate them, I say, Oh God, we don't know what this child will be. But I pray for him as your servant. So that we may power down the Holy Spirit over him. So that he may grow up following your ways. And so that he may fulfill the purpose of your work to create him. So that he may glorify your name. And so that he may be a blessing to every man so that it can be a joy to the family and to be the honor to the parents. That is the reason why every person has been created to glorify our God and to be a blessing to others. We, we all of us are equal. God spoke about it. That the people you see being among the prophets what God is Speaking about me. Why can't you ask him? Ask him, he will tell you. It is very simple. When he wake up early in the morning, go and ask God, our Lord, I don't know what you will have prepared for me today. But there's what, just one thing that I know. There's the good work that you have predestined before so that I may walk in them. Just lead in my steps. Something amazing when you pray every day like that from the bottom of your heart, God does it. Then the pastor will tell you, you used to, to do a favor to me. Do not remember. Why? You did not even care about them. God put them in you. Because I said, I will lead you in the good work. That this child that I brought is the good work. Then you give him money. Then you continue remembering it. Then another one will come. Then you pray for him. Uh -huh. Then he said, there's a time you prayed for me. Then you find him that does not even remember. But God who brought him, it was just in the good plan of God. Hallelujah. Because all of us, that is what God spoke about us. There is the blessing that we are expecting that is coming along with the grace of God. Those who have been gracious, who have gotten the grace of God, the grace of God has inserted us into the family of God. I am waiting to go to our home. Those who say, let me pray for the heaven, God, oh, give me heaven. Just other things, leave them, just give me heaven. Heaven has come into the package of salvation. When he received Jesus as the redeemer and savior, they gave you the passport, the passport of heaven. 
the passport you can see, it is says that whoever that holds this passport, the government of Rwanda testifies that is a Rwandan. When I, I have this passport, then I go to the airport in Rwanda. They don't only stamp the stamps that uh, they used to stamp. I just go to Ndumunyarwanda. I'm a Rwandan. There's, there's a machine which, which, is calling, which is called I am a Rwandan. I just insert my passport there. I can even, my finger can. Then I say this is a Rwandan. Then the machine can open, the machine can open. Then I can go home. Even in heaven in the same way. If you have the grace of God, then you walk with Jesus. The hope of eternal life. When I will depart from the earth, I go. Then I say, I'm coming. Then they open the doors. Because it's our home. I will need not even to know. I will go up knowing that they are expecting me to come. I'm coming. You remember when they stoned Stephen to death? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stephen was seated. Then he said, wait a little bit. I can see the Son of God. He's standing at the right hands of God. The Bible says, he sits at the right hand of God doing intercession. But Stephen saw him standing. Why was Jesus Christ standing? He knew that Stephen is about to be stoned to death. Then he, he said, I will find him to, to, to the gate. Waiting for me. I'm waiting for that day to happen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then they, they made a handshake. They shake, they shake their hand and say congratulations. Welcome home. Welcome home. Welcome home. We have seen you. When you have been testifying about heaven. When you have been doing your work of service well. Then they will have been now. You go and look in the chapter 6. They have been just uh, cheering. They have been chewing their teeth. When they saw him, they saw him looking like an angel. Uh, how do you look like when the heavens, they, they are just chewing their teeth? I mean when the world is chewing their teeth. But people have started chewing their teeth for you, against you. But just he looked up in heaven. He saw Jesus. Then the light of heaven just came to him. When they looked at him, they saw looking like an angel. They were not even frightened by what happened. They stoned him to death. But when he was about to die, he prayed the prayer like Jesus Christ. Our Father, I know I'm coming home. I know I am coming. It's because you are Just do not do not count this sin upon them. He died like Jesus. When he came to Jesus before Jesus, I used to meditate and feel the tears running down in my eyes. Then I shaked, I shaked his hands. I said, Stephen, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. I am I'm proud of being your God and you are you are my apostle. When I was beholding unto you when you were still in the world. When you were serving me. Making an argument with the cool night. They have been speaking the deceit against you. They took you. You did not even fear. You, you testify me. Then after. You, you ended your journey well. When they stoned you to death, you didn't even chew your teeth. Then you prayed the blessing upon them. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. There are some people whom God can, be, can see and say this person. This person is a great man. Of, I'm proud of him. 
The things that can make you to be proud of. Or it can make you having the desire to see your Lord looking at you. And is expecting you. Then he say, when I come before him. I shall never be ashamed. I shall never be ashamed. I am waiting the day that you will say. I welcome home. Where I have prepared you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Reason why Paul said this grace. It, give, it gives us the hope of eternal life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you come to an understanding of this. Whoever who is seated here. Who knows that when you make your, own, your movement. The one who wrote the book of Hebrews. He wrote and said. The year, once you are, we are surrounded by the great cloud of the things. The witness. Take off everything heavy to us. The sin that can entangle us. So that we can run a race. Heading to Jesus Christ, behold to him. He is the founder of our faith and is the finisher of our faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I used to be an athlete, person. I understand this language they used. This terminology that they can use. They are using. We used to go to the ground and remove whatever things is heavy. Then we took, you take off all the shoes that you used to wear. Then you, you wear the spiked shoes. Those that the athletes used to run the marathon. They, they don't use it. Oh, yes. It's just the speed. They used to run. They don't use it. Yes. 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 They don't then you, you, you are an spectator looking how they are running. That is the example that Paul used. There are Peter who went ahead of him. There are Moses who went ahead of him. There are David who went ahead of him. There are Paul. They are seated in the stadium. They are looking at us running. In their, in their midst, there is Jesus. They are looking at you. Yes. Making your movement the rest you are running. See how this guy, who is called Alex, look at how he's running his race. Watch out, young man. Yeah, you, you watch that, that young man. I am the one. Jesus Christ is looking at me. He knows how you run. He is beholding out how I'm I'm doing. Even you, in my 65 years, they say this old man is still running. He's still running the race. I'm proud of him. I'm proud of you guys. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me conclude. Paul said, This salvation, this grace, he gave himself away so that he may redeem us from all the wickedness. Oh. To purify for himself the people that are his and the very own and eager to do what is good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The holy nation. The holy nation. We are the citizen of the, 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 of the tribe of the people of God. Uh, Peter wrote and said a long time we were not even the nation. But now, he made us to be a nation of the priest and also the king. In the revelation, he said we shall reign with Christ. I'm a prince in the making. I, I am the priest that God is continuing preparing. After knowing this, Jesus Christ made us to be his nation. Then he wind with the word that I shall wind with. Who have the zeal of the good work? 
the zeal. Not those who are made to do good work. They have the zeal. They preach with the zeal. Look at Paul. Because he's the one who wrote these words. And uh, the things about grace is Paul who wrote more than any other person. And nobody wa worked or acted like Paul. 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 First of all, he said, I am a sinner that God favored. He said, I don't even fear to testify that I used to be a sinner. Because the grace of God is found when you are humble and accept that you are a sinner. Many people after being or becoming a pastor you put on your suit then you feel proud then you feel you are the young brother of God the young brother of God just humble you've been favored only Paul said, I let me give you some few scriptures so that I can wind up. There's where Paul wrote and said, Let me start in the book of Romans. Uh, after uh, having the knowledge of the grace, 15 18, the book of Romans. I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me in leading the Gentile. In another word, Paul said I should not be proud of what I do. Because that is how God tells us. In Jeremiah, he said, he who wants to be proud has to be proud because to, he has known me. Then the one who is a hero, who should now be proud of his wisdom. The wise person not to be proud of his wisdom. The rich not to be proud of his riches. But the one who wants to be proud should be proud of it. That, that he has known that I'm God who is more merciful, who is so much merciful. And whatever we have now reached. I used to teach youth, the young people. Even now, I teach young people. How? Like me. <laughs> Once you see, you find yourself, you are being used by God. Just drink the bottle of something or the drinks of just making humble, the humility. Once God promotes you, continue to add some little of humility. When he continues and he takes you to the position of region level, just drink a jerrycan of humility. Man, if he takes you to international, just go and buy maybe a furnace. Drink the humility. Be humble. Because it is by grace. But when the grace is coming upon you, 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 you can become a zealous of the good one. Then he said, I have nothing to be proud of. He was writing to the Galatians. He said, I am. But it's not I who is. It's Christ who is in me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And whatever I do in this flesh, I do it by believing the Son of God who gave himself away for me. It is not because I'm an expert, not because I'm a giant, a great person. Oh, yeah. No. Grace. By grace. Motivated by grace. Motivated by grace. Yes, we don't take it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you getting what I'm saying? The grace of God. Let's wind up in these words. The, word, the following words. 
Abikorinto. Ah, uh, the words of Paul to Corinthians. Igice cya 15. First. First Corinthians. Igice cya 15. Ah, uh, chapter 15. By the grace of God. And his grace to me was not without effect. I worked harder than all men, than all them. Yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. I love such kind of terminology of Paul. I came a letter but because I am aware of the grace of God I made a zeal of serving God and I have worked a lot much more than those who predeced the predecessors of me but I don't feel to be proud of anything because all of these it is just by the grace of God with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here it is where we relate our salvation and works. A grace gives us salvation. And also grace gives us the zeal Hallelujah. of working. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Paul takes the gospel. Uh, he takes it from the side of Israel. Then he took it to the Spain. When he was writing to Roman, he said, I will pass by Rome towards Spain. When you go and uh, consult the map, you will, you will find Paul taking the gospel from Israel to the end of the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when Paul was turned to death, he said sometimes they, were, they, they throw the stones against me. Uh, Judah, I mean the Jews they beat me many times. Three times they even beat me again. I was in the storms, in the wilderness, in some other stuff. But those kind of things did not discourage me. Because Paul was aware of the grace of God. He understood the grace of God and the zeal to serve God. That by winding up in those kind of kind of things, the work he did, he wrote the half of the New Testament. The New Testament. It has 27 books. Uh, 14. Paul himself wrote 13 books. But when you combine with the book of Acts, from chapter 9 and 18, you can even say it is maybe 14 epistles of Paul. The half of the New Testament has been written by Paul. The zeal of the good work. Brethren who are gathered here, You've received Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. It's by grace. And if you are growing up into the way of righteousness, of, of salvation, it's by grace. By something remaining. Do you have the zeal of the service in all things that you have said? I love this. When I found the people preaching or teaching, I go also and I teach. I, I can sit even and I join others to sit. Once I found them praying, I join them in prayer. When I found them doing a fundraising for the building or constructing the temple, I can join the work. The zeal, have the zeal of the work of God. 
If you give your tithe, tithing, your, your tithe because of the zeal of the work of God. So that's the grace of God can continue making you do a lot of work. Let's pray. I wind up. May God bless you. Our conference is over. Those of Kasarani, I am still here, we'll be together. Next weekend, I'll be to the bishop. Um, UPCM. Uh, UPCM. Here, Kayole. Apart from uh, this, the service we have on Tuesday, the intercessors. May God bless you. But if you are seated here today and you felt that the Holy Spirit is telling you something and tell you even you uh, you must be included into those who are having the zeal of the service. Ask God what can I do? The good work you prepared for me. Uh, what do you want me to do? So that you can take an action. The grace of God. It can give you a zeal. Of serving, uh, of serving God. Let's pray. As we are praying. If you are seated here. And feeling sick. Uh, along our prayer hold the part of the body which is sick tell God our God uh, heal me this prayer that I, I pray uh, let it impact on me so that all of us Jesus Christ says you be given power of doing its work when the Holy Spirit comes let's pray for the power of God all of us together the one who knows God is the Redeemer and the Savior the one who is full of the Holy Spirit we, don't, we are not full like bottles we, we can link we link. We link. Even the disciples of Jesus. They had the links. We, 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 they, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. When to get to the chapter. Four, they prayed. They were full of the Holy Spirit again. They continue going and refill and refill. Let us ask God to refill us again. Stand up. Be Father, Lord Jesus Christ, we are now ending this conference. Let it not end anyhow. Let it be the beginning of the changes. Let these people have been together. Let your grace, your salvation, your faith uh, come together with the works so that we can work, we can make the ministry of God. Let your name, Lord Jesus Christ, see and each everyone here, Lord. The one who was weak when he was walking slowly in the spirit the one who was just going and coming give him strength today give him the zeal to serve you oh Lord Jesus Christ the one who has come without knowing you open his eyes just take him out of the religion so that you can put him into the holy nation into the holy nation into the heirs of the kingdom our Lord Jesus Christ all of us here Lord we pray let the power of the Holy Spirit walk in our midst and fill on each other fill him with the new power the Holy Spirit our Lord Jesus has said when you come when you come when you come, when you come, we will be given power. Give us power in a physical way. Give us power in a mindly way. Give us power in a soul way. Give us power in a way to work. Let your name, O Lord, be uplifted. 
the Holy Spirit walking in our midst. You know how everyone, everyone is. And accept, convince him. And give him power. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. You raised Jesus Christ from the dead. When he was a dead person. When he was a crushed. And you came. And you raised him from the dead. When he was alive. Walk in our midst, Lord. Those who are sick. Those who are having the sickness. The sickness of bones. Sickness of muscles. Sickness of bellies. Those sicknesses. We scatter them, O Lord. Let your power come to heal. Let your power come to strengthen. Let your power come to change. Let your power come to build. Let your power come to heal the sickness. Let your power come to give the testimony. The, as the prayer we pray, Lord. Let your people be filled with the power. Let your work continue to be bound. Let your people to be blessed. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God.